For this video, I have made two doubles. One is correctly proved, while the other one is overproved. So first of all, I will recover. It is quite easy, you will see. But I will also bake it side by side with the good one, so to speak. First of all, of course, we might just have forgotten about the dough. Busy days always happen, but they are out of control. There's nothing we can really do to prevent them. The common reasons why overproofing happens causes on which we can actually act upon are basically just two. Too much yeast and too high a temperature. They are strictly connected to each other anyway because the same amount of yeast can be too much for a room temperature fermentation. But it can also be just fine if we plan to let our dough rise in the fridge. I will not dig deeper into this topic right now because I got a nice video to help you determine how much yeast you should use in your pizza dough. Today I'll give you some hint on how to avoid overproofing and how to recover the overfermented dough. If you tried a specific recipe and overproofing happened despite having followed the recommended procedure, despite having kept the suggested timeline, I would recommend repeat the experiment, meaning the particular recipe, but change only one element. I will start by using only half of the yeast that the recipe called for. The alternative would be use the same amount of yeast but cut the resin time if a room temperature proofing was suggested. Or to keep the same timing, same amount of yeast, but keep the dough in the fridge. Lower temperature of the dough in this case. One last element to consider is if you use warm water or lukewarm water, which is often suggested for some reason, especially, you know, those all around blogs, those they know everything. So if that is the case, just use room temperature water. Again, lower temperature of the water in this case. By the way, if you want a tried and tested recipe and procedure, try the ones I got to my channel, for example, this is my favorite. But now it's time for me to show some stuff and for you to hit the thumbs up. Okay, I have here my two doubles. This is over fermented, this is the regular one. They come from the very same batch. I just uh, split it in two. This one stayed at room temperature for the whole time, while this one went in the fridge after half an hour, 40 minutes more or less. First of all, I will open and show you the over fermented double. Actually, the first thing I can notice is the smell. I can smell a bit of alcohol, but in certain conditions you can also smell vinegar. If you're watching this video, you will probably have already experienced over fermentation. Let me know in the comments what you actually smelled and I will tell you why. Now, if we observe this double, we notice all these bubbles and the structure seems weak. It looks like it is collapsing. While the other one when they stayed in the fridge, it's nice and smooth. And as you can see here, it's still round while the other one has completely lost the shape. Now let's have a look underneath, quite the difference. But now it's time to recover this double. We need to give it a little bit more strength and elasticity again, because right now, all the chemistry that happened inside the dough made it very, very weak. I need actually a little bit of water on my surface. Very well. So the idea is just to make a couple of simple coil folds. So you grab it from here. You do it once, you do it twice, you try to assess if the dough is getting back its strength and elasticity. And so you repeat until you feel that there is tension again. You do a couple of tests, just like you do when you finish kneading your dough. Now, I will say that this looks and feels already way better because it gained some elasticity. I want to put it back in its little bowl. Right now, this needs to rise again because we just gave it more, more strength and elasticity. If we try to stretch it right now, this would give us hard times because it's too elastic in this very moment. It would 
uh, bounce back. I will leave them here together for a couple of hours or so. Then later on I will bake them both and uh, I will compare the result of the two doubles. See you later! They sound more or less the same in my opinion. Let's look at the crumb. I don't really see any big difference. Let's see another slice. All the fermented versus fermented. This is more open than the regular fermented one. But it's a little bit more acidic than what I am used to. Well, this one will be more familiar for me. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will want to subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Ciao.